Hi, my name is Samara Rizvi. I'm a fellow in the Division of Gastroenterology and Hepatology at Mayo Clinic Rochester. If you're watching this, we presume that either you or a loved one is concerned about a diagnosis of bile duct cancer. We empathize with your health concerns, and thus today we would like to go over the different types of bile duct cancer and their potential treatments. Cholangiocarcinoma, or cancer of the bile ducts, is a rare cancer with approximately 5,000 new cases each year in the United States. Cholangiocarcinoma is divided into three types based on the location of the tumor within the bile ducts. Each of these types is distinct and differs on the basis of its biology and treatment course. Cancer arising above large bile ducts coursing through the liver is referred to as intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma or ICCA. This can be potentially treated with surgery to remove the tumor or with local therapies. Cancer arising from the hilum or point adjoining of the left and right hepatic ducts is referred to as perihilar cholangiocarcinoma or PCCA. Liver transplantation following chemotherapy and radiation therapy is a potentially curative option for a subset of patients with this type. Cancer arising in the lower part of the common bile duct is referred to as distal cholangiocarcinoma or DCCA. Depending on the exact location of the tumor, your doctor may recommend that a procedure known as a Whipple procedure should be performed in addition to liver transplantation. Perihylocholangiocarcinoma, or PCCA, is the most common type. For a highly select group of patients with PCCA, we have developed a specialized protocol consisting of radiation therapy and chemotherapy followed by liver transplantation. In order to be eligible for this protocol, patients must have tumors that cannot be removed by surgery, tumor size should be less than three centimeters, and there should be no spread of the tumor either within the liver or outside the liver. For patients with PSC and PCCA, liver transplantation is considered rather than surgery if the tumor size is less than three centimeters and there is no spread of tumor. Our treatment protocol consists of delivering radiation therapy first. Our patients receive two radiation sessions a day for three weeks. At the same time, they're given intravenous chemotherapy. At the end of the three-week period, patients have brachytherapy. This refers to the placement of radioactive seeds in the biliary tree near the tumor. Following brachytherapy, patients typically return home and are started on oral chemotherapy. The waiting time for a deceased donor liver transplant is typically one to two years, depending on a patient's blood group. Patients remain on oral chemotherapy until that time. Before liver transplant, a staging surgery is performed to ensure that the tumor has not spread elsewhere in the liver or outside the liver. This graph depicts the survival after liver transplantation, meaning what is the probability of an individual surviving a certain number of years after undergoing liver transplantation. At five years, the probability that an individual will be alive is 65%. This is quite remarkable, particularly when compared to less than 10% survival without any intervention. As reviewed earlier, intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, or ICCA, occurs above the large bile ducts coursing through the liver. Success rates for liver transplantation for ICCA have not been very high. Surgical removal of the tumor remains a treatment of choice for this type. Unfortunately, due to local spread of the cancer, surgical removal is an option in only about 30% of patients who present with ICCA. This graph represents the probability of survival after a given amount of time. For instance, 60 months after surgical removal of an ICCA, the probability that an individual will be alive is between 20 to 40 percent. This means that some individuals will fare well after surgery and others will not do as well. For patients who are not candidates for surgery, local regional therapies are a non-curative or palliative option. These include TACE or transarterial chemoembolization and TAR, or transarterial radioembolization. In TACE, a chemotherapeutic agent is delivered directly to the tumor 
allowing for high concentrations to reach the tumor with limited effects to the rest of the body. In addition, during taste, the hepatic artery, a main artery in the liver, is embolized or intentionally blocked. This prevents the delivery of oxygen and nutrients to the tumor. TAR is another local regional option. Liver tumors have been shown to be sensitive to radiotherapy. However, radiation therapy can cause damage to the normal liver surrounding the tumor. TAR allows for delivery of radioactive microspheres to the tumor. This results in high-dose radiotherapy to the tumor with limited effect on the surrounding normal tissue. Both taste and TAR allow for tumor control with limited effects on the remainder of the body in locally advanced tumors. Systemic chemotherapy is a standard of care in patients with cholangiocarcinoma of any type with advanced disease for which curative therapies are not an option. This graph shows the probability of survival after a certain number of months of treatment with either gemcitabine or the combination of gemcitabine and cisplatin. Cancer arising in the lower part of the common bile duct is referred to as distal cholangiocarcinoma or DCCA. For DCCA, in addition to liver transplantation, a Whipple procedure may be performed depending on the extent of the tumor. During this procedure, the head of the pancreas is removed along with the first part of the small intestine, the gallbladder, and the lower part of the common bile duct. Your doctor may talk to you about the genetics of your tumor. We now have the testing to do this. Genetic analysis of a tumor may reveal a number of genetic abnormalities, such as the presence of FGFR fusion genes. Testing for genetic abnormalities may carry an out-of-pocket expense. For some of these abnormalities, drugs have been developed which target the abnormal pathway. In the future, we hope to provide individualized targeted therapy for patients based on the genetics and biology of their tumor. We realize that this is an overwhelming situation involving complex decision making with many different possible approaches. We recommend that you seek care at a big medical center with expertise in liver transplantation, hepatology, hepatobiliary surgery, medical and radiation oncology, and interventional radiology. Such centers will be able to provide a multidisciplinary team approach that is essential for the management of this difficult cancer. To summarize the main take home points, liver transplantation is curative in highly selected patients when combined with radiation therapy and chemotherapy. Gemcitabine plus cisplatin is a pragmatic standard of care for advanced disease. Taste and TAR are palliative options in intrahepatic CCA. Targeted therapy may be an option depending on the genetic analysis of a tumor, and multidisciplinary team approach is key. Thank you for your attention. We hope that this has been beneficial.